Hi everyone, welcome back to the show and we have Kate Erickson joining me. Kate, thanks for coming on. Mike, thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Let's do this. And Kate is the engine behind Entrepreneurs on Fire, which is an award-winning podcast where JLD interviews entrepreneurs. And this is a bit of an interesting one because we're focusing a lot on how to save time. What, what do we need to do? How can we utilize what's out there, tools and systems to help us get over the whole I don't have time excuse that a lot of people tend to have when trying to go full time. So Kate, you shared a bit about your background around this. Like what sort of things have you gone through to, that some people might be able to learn from? Yeah, definitely. So I have a very like corporate background. I grew up pretty much not even knowing that entrepreneurship existed. I didn't really learn about this concept until I was well into my 20s. So I didn't grow up like dreaming of becoming an entrepreneur. I, I literally didn't know what it was. Um, so I can totally resonate with the idea of being in a corporate job, of doing the side hustle. I've done that before. Um, and I'm very lucky and grateful to have not only discovered entrepreneurship, but fully embraced it, um, achieved that lifestyle uh, and financial freedom that I've always dreamed of and now has actually become a reality. And when I look back and think about like some of the most critical turning points or things that I've done on my journey that have helped me get to where I am right now, what comes up over and over and over again is actually what I was best at in corporate America. And that's really like the details and digging down into how to make things things that you're doing most effective. And that typically comes by way of efficiency, productivity, and having a priority. And I know that it's really tough, like as we're just starting out or as we're doing a side hustle and thinking about, you know, coming full time, it's like, where do you even start? Right? Because there's so much to do and you have so many ideas and you have so many different people telling you that there's, you know, you need to do this and you need to yeah. do that and all these <laughs> social media platforms. And it can be incredibly overwhelming. So I really like to, you know, just talk about breaking that stuff down so that you can have a clear focus and a clear path forward because, you know, it makes everything so much easier to where you feel like you're actually like in that rowboat, like seamlessly, like going along the water versus like currents and waves coming at you. <laughs> so how, how do we start? Cause the impression that, that I get is you've got to start sort of analyzing what works and what doesn't work before you know what to change but is that the sort of angle that we take with this yeah sure i mean i think what's really most important that maybe a lot of us don't spend enough time on is really understanding what our end goal is so of course, that's why we do what we do. So like understanding why you are creating this business, um, you know, as, as just a quick example, if, you know, let's say you're starting a business that's helping people become uh, better marketers, like why, why, why are you doing that? Why do you have a passion or, um, you know, why do you feel moved by the idea of helping other people become great marketers? So really understanding that from an internal perspective, because when things do get hard and you do feel really overwhelmed and you've been knocked down like five times, yeah. you're really going to need that why to get back up and try again. So that's super critical. And then after you've you've come up with that after you understand why it is that you're doing what you're doing, then it's really about, okay, what's the end goal here? What is it that do I want to be a, a coach for people? Do I want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching? Do I want to create a membership site and have a, do I want to grow a community? Um, do I want to sell physical products? Maybe my goal is to create a physical product suite. So once we understand why we're doing what we're doing, who it is that we can help our perfect customer, our avatar, then it's really about getting so super clear on what the goal is. What is it that you are creating that's going to help your audience get over the bridge from where they are 
right now to where they want to be. So that's just like really foundational, super important stuff to figure out. And I think a lot of the times we skip over that because we just dive into the like, okay, how do I create content? How do I grow an audience? How do I um, start email marketing? How do I get on as many social media platforms as possible so I can grow my following? But like, why are you doing that is the first step. Yeah, I also find that um, why is often the first question that you go to as well. When things do get tough, why tends to be the first question. If you don't have a reason, that tends to be the first sort of hurdle that we don't get across and we end up stopping. You know, why tends to be the, uh, the go-to question. How, how would we, how do we go about finding what that is? And I ask because it's a question that we do skip over. I know a lot of people that do skip over it, sort of what you mentioned as well, but how, how do we make it easy enough so that we don't skip over it? Because I find that if it's not convenient or it's not straightforward or it's not easy, we don't know how to find what that is, that tends to be why people might skip over it. So what would your answer be to that? Um, so there's a TED Talk from Simon Sinek called Start With Why. Um, it's a it's a 18 minute YouTube video or TED talk that you can watch on the TED website, and it's a really great starting point. It really gets you thinking. He gives examples of other major brands and how they've kind of come up with this why concept. Like, why is it that um, Apple is actually one of his examples? You know, Apple never goes out and tells people like, "Hey, we create beautiful computers. Buy one." <laughs> No, it's like really much deeper than that, right? Like they want to create like this innovation in this world that has never been done before. Yeah. And people can get on board with that because they in their gut resonate with that. Not like logistically speaking, I need a computer. So like, I guess I'll go get a Mac instead of a Dell. But like, how is how am I connecting with that company and their reason behind why they're doing what they're doing? So I kind of like to think of it as like twofold. So I have my own personal reasons like for my lifestyle that I do what I do and that's for freedom. I want freedom to go where I want, when I want, with whom I want. That's my definition of freedom and everyone's definition of freedom is different, but that is like my overall personal reason for choosing entrepreneurship, for choosing to live in Puerto Rico, for choosing to travel home to San Diego at least once a quarter to spend time with my family, for choosing to spend three months on the road. Like that is what I want for my life. So what does your perfect day look like? What does your perfect year look like? If you're going into 2020 and you're doing literally every single thing that you want to do, what does that look like? For me, it is being in the business. It's being on podcasts like yours, Mike. It's speaking to people about the fact that this is a choice we get to make, but you have to intentionally choose it. You can't just say like, oh, I want to travel and I want to you know, have freedom to pick my kids up from school and then spend the rest of the day with them without worrying about how I'm going to pay my bills. Okay, that's amazing. But like you have to choose that through the actions that you're taking. So yeah. like if that is through like an entrepreneurial venture for you where you get to, you know, uh, de decide your own time schedule and you get to um, say, I'm not going to let somebody else determine what hours I work and where I show up to work, then like how are you going to put things in place to actually make that happen? So that then becomes the why of why you're doing your business. I love what I do and working with John at Entrepreneurs on Fire. And my why for being in this business is to help entrepreneurs understand that they have a choice and that there are systems that we can put in place to achieve the lifestyle and financial freedom that we want and need. So anytime I'm having a super rough day or I don't feel like continuing, it's not like, oh, I do this because I love chatting with entrepreneurs, which I do. And it's not that I do this because... Um, you know, I, I like to create content and, and I enjoy teaching. Like, yes, I do do it for that. But my why deep down is to help entrepreneurs understand that they have a choice and that we can put systems in place in order to achieve financial and lifestyle freedom. So like when, when it gets really tough for me and I think like, oh, but if I stop, 
I can't help somebody achieve that, that's what keeps me going. So you've got to, you really have to challenge yourself too, because the first couple of times you ask yourself why you do what you do, you're going to come up with what I refer to and what many other amazing people who specifically like niche in this area as a surface why. It's just right. the very surface of why you're doing that. So you've got to ask yourself why like 15 or 20 times. So <laughs> like the first time somebody asked me why, I'm like, oh, well, I love helping entrepreneurs. Well, why do you love helping entrepreneurs? Well, I love um, being able to help them, you know, choose the, to spend their time the way that they want to spend their time. Well, why do you like, why do you like helping entrepreneurs choose to decide how they spend their time? So like really challenge yourself on that aspect, you know, set a timer for 30 minutes and it's going to get hard and you're going to get to a point where you're like, I just don't, I can't do another why. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to go any deeper than that. Don't stop. You have to be in it for the long run because if you're going to quit on figuring out what your why is, there's a whole lot of other quits in front of you waiting. Mm, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. It's almost like if you're going to quit with the thing that's kind of inside your head that you can actually control to a certain extent, then there's a heck of a lot out there that, you can't really control and sometimes you just have to roll with the punches almost. So yeah, that's a very interesting point. And it, it sort of, it almost comes full circle in the, it's almost like the why is what gives you the clarity that you need that makes everything else easier. And one of the things that came up for me just while you were talking there, Kate, was, you know, I can't remember who said it, but it's like, if you've got a whole day to cut down a tree, you spend the first two or three hours sharpening your ax. And I get a mm. funny feeling that, this is the sort of thing that it is like the why and doing all the groundwork inside your own head. It's almost like that version of sharpening your act, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you said it too, Mike, like this is the foundation of what it is that you're creating and to be able to build the most solid platform possible is going to help set you up for success in the long run so much because if you skip over this step and you just start creating content or you just start, you know, getting on podcasts or you just launch a video show. I mean, that's great. I'm all about people taking action, especially imperfect action, because it's never going to be perfect. And the faster you can get something out there and get feedback on it, the better. But if you're just putting stuff out there without even understanding why you're doing that, it's going to be a very, very long road. Yeah, for sure. I really do feel like this is, it's almost something that if you don't do this, that could be why you're struggling. That could be why you've got the whole trying to balance everything around time and what actions to take and what choices to make. And it'll make things a lot harder, won't it? If you don't know why you're doing something, how, how can you make the choice? Well, and it's so much of the mindset too. I mean, it, again, it's really easy to go for like the strategies and the tactics that are working right now in the online space. And um, I get it, like those are important. But if, if you don't have your mindset right around those things, then they're, I mean, maybe they'll work for you, but they're not going to work for you in the long term. So it's, I mean, I just think it's so critical to really sit with, um, you know, how, how you're approaching your business, what your goal is for your business, what your goal is for the people you're creating a transformation for, um, because that's just going to inform so many other questions that you're going to come up on once you do turn this into a full-time uh, full thing. Well, once we've got through this and we've got clear on our why, we've said the, the 15 whys to get down to something that's, I guess it's more of a story, I suppose, around why you're doing it. it isn't just an answer, is it? Put all the answers together, it creates a story around why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. So I like, I like the idea of asking it several times. Are there anything that you can think of that's your go-to for, okay, once we've established that, we know what our why is, we still need to... We still need to be a bit more effective around how we do things. Like we've we've acknowledged that. What systems or tools have you found that's, that's the easiest to use? I suppose because sometimes the tool can make things hard. Right. <laughs> the other systems that I've seen that have gone, 
yeah, but it's going to take me like hours to figure out how to do this thing when it used to take me a lot faster without the system. So is there anything that you found that works best around trying to maximize how we spend our time? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I think like actually tools and systems aside, like the process that I love to follow, like once you're at the point where you say, okay, I've got my why, I know why I'm doing this, like what I want my life to look like. I know what my perfect day looks like. I know what I can see my 2020 unfolding in front of me and all the amazing things I want to accomplish. I have goals set and I also know my why, like within my business, what it is that I'm going to help people accomplish, like why I do what I do within my business. And the next step is really about getting it out there. So, right, we all need to start with building an audience. And it blows my mind sometimes how heavily people rely on paid traffic to grow their audience, which don't get me wrong, I think paid traffic can be an amazing supplement. I do not ever think that it should be the number one traffic source that you have. So I always say that the next best step for you to like walk into a business with in order to start growing your audience, which is going to then give you, you know, the feedback that you need. Um, it's going to help you set up the funnels to start selling whatever products, services that you have. Um, so it's about figuring out how you're going to get it out there. So there are a lot of really amazing mediums that we can use to communicate with an audience who wants and needs what it is we have to offer. And some examples of that are through videos, maybe a YouTube channel, through a podcast like you're doing, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's through a blog. Maybe it's through other written content, articles and such. So really figuring out like what that major traffic generation source is going to be in terms of the content that you're creating and focusing on that, like really setting yourself up for success and saying, all right, I'm going to go as an example, I'm going to go all in on a podcast. That's going to be my major, tra major traffic generator. That's how I'm going to share the content that I know my audience wants and needs. That's how I'm going to bring people into my world. That's how I'm going to invite people to my website. That's how I'm going to invite people onto my email list. And again, this all goes back to like, what's your end goal? What is like, where are you taking people where you can create the maximum impact? So let me give you an example of, for us, one of our biggest things that we've created in our, biz in our business, it's like our flagship course, um, if you will, is Podcasters Paradise. That's where we teach people how to create, grow, and monetize their own podcasts. To get people to Podcasters Paradise, which is our ultimate end goal for people who are looking to podcast, we first need to let people know that we even offer something around podcasting. So on our podcast, we talk about free podcast course. We invite people to join us in this completely free course that we've created, where we'll teach you how to create and launch your podcast. It's completely free. It's a way for us to nurture people, to welcome them into our world, to give them some amazing free content, and in exchange, get their email address. Because once we have their email address, then we have a way to communicate with them. So that is the first step in our funnel of getting people to the end goal of Podcasters Paradise. So you're, you're jumping into this, you're figuring out what's that one main traffic generator that you're going to start with in order to deliver the content you know your audience wants and needs. And then once you have that set up and you have it functioning, what's the purpose of people coming in? Like how, what's your end goal of how you're going to help people get to where they want to go and then building that funnel out from there. So Again, I mean, Mike, we said it at the beginning, and I know that you agree with me on this. It can be really overwhelming. And there's a million things to do when you're starting a business, but I can guarantee you if you just focus on one major traffic generator, one way that you are creating content and welcoming people into your world, and then you focus on one like path that you want them to follow, your funnel, that you will gain traction, you'll gain momentum, you'll start getting feedback and engagement from your audience, and it's going to help you start to build out that business bigger and bigger as you go. I definitely feel like that that's that's kind of the secret, I suppose, is focusing on one thing, particularly if if you're starting out, I and mean, even if you're not, I mean, you guys aren't starting out, and yet you're still sort of, okay, 
if we're going to try to grow this thing around podcasters paradise we need something to show people like we know what we're doing and how to get people in like we need people i think businesses tend to forget that people is how businesses are, are grown almost you know everyone needs people everyone needs relationships everyone needs you know to, to grow the audience otherwise you don't have a business do you right exactly so if people wanted to learn more about yourself kate and, and what you guys do at eo fire where can we find out more yeah absolutely thanks again so much for having me on mike everything that we do is over at eofire.com all right well kate thanks for coming on again um if memory serves this is your second time so it's been amazing to have you on and i look forward to hearing more about what you guys get up to awesome thanks so much mike